Hi. Uh, um, I know it's the end of the day. I'm sorry you have me now. But uh, yeah, look, we're going to go through this quite quickly and so that we can go through this. Um, a quick introduction to, uh, to who we are and what we do. Um, Think Media Labs, we specialize in digital and social media. We, uh, in 2011, we've been quoted as uh, in, in all news stations regarding the latest in social media in the region. Uh, I also teach uh, digital media at LEU, and this is what, what I'm here uh, to share with you today. Just to, to give you an idea about social media and higher ed education, which is our topic. Who of us here uses SMS on a regular basis? Um, what about Facebook? Okay. How many of us who raise our hands use it during sex? As educators, everybody here in the room, as an educator, we have the challenge. We're, we're, de we're trying to reach out to a generation where 10% of them say it's okay to text or respond to a text during sex, and 3% say it's okay to check, to, to check Facebook during intimate moments. So this is the challenge that we have in terms of reaching out to our students and making sure, and making sure that we connect through them. So we have to deal with content, we have to deal with tools and technologies and so on. So we have to dig a bit deeper into why things are like they are today and uh, what, what led us to, to this point. If we want to take a look at a bit deeper at it, look at the t-shirts that, that, that are being sold. This is, this is at, at, at Zara uh, in Beirut. I need a Wi-Fi t-shirt. Um, no Wi-Fi. This is a t-shirt at, at Bershka as well. Um, another t-shirt Bershka is I, I'm online. So the pop culture element of it is, uh, is there. Also, this is also another, uh, another project that was done in New York by an artist. Pay attention while walking. Your Facebook status update can wait. So this is the, the level of um, intimacy when it comes to social media technology and reaching out to students. If you want to take a look at, at overall, most students that we deal with have a digital device, whether it's a smartphone or a computer, a tablet. And most of them like to communicate with professors mostly via, via email, but uh, more and more via social media. Um, so just to, to take a brief look about what social media was in 2011-2012, here's a... Um, it, took, um, it took TV 50, uh, to reach 50 million users 38 years. And uh, if you want to go down to internet, four years to reach 50 million users, and uh, the iPod was three years, 50 million users. Facebook was able to reach 200 million users in less than a year. And this is a quick video to show the status of social media today. Let's talk a bit more about how higher education is using social media. In 2009, uh, there was a study that was done around 84% of schools were not involved in social media uh, in a way or another. Now, 2012, things are different. Uh, schools are present across, when I mean schools, I mean you know, schools, universities, and education systems. They're across different uh, platforms. 
um, you know, Facebook and blogging and LinkedIn and so on. Um, it's, it's used for a mix of in the classroom aspect of it for class announcements, uh, sharing notes, uh, interacting with students, or you know, the school pride when we have games or major announcements and so on. Uh, the other part is uh, from an outreach perspective where you know, general communication as a university, uh, we deal with the professional development, the alumni, and so on. Um, and most top schools in the world are highly active on social media in one way or another. Um, also, what LinkedIn recently did was they added a section for students even if they haven't graduated yet. So uh, you can help your students, they can, they can add specific sections for students, for them to add their inputs. What LinkedIn also did was they, they in, in June, uh, uh, they, they, they created something for classmates where, where you can rec reconnect more clearly with, with fellow alumni. Now, if we look at different ways universities share information, they use it to share uh, different things about their professors, about their students, and the work that they're doing. Um, they also use it to, to broadcast events or uh, to talk about uh, different problems that, that, that are happening around in, 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 on campus or, or in the country uh, where, where they're in. Or, or you know, groups, different groups for uh, graduating classes. Uh, there's a lot of production and sharing of content, uh, especially with, with iTunes U and YouTube for teachers. So there's a big, bigger trend growing towards the use of video in classrooms and sharing that. So this, this allows uh, more global access to different forms of, of content. YouTube recently uh, launched YouTube for teachers. Uh, just to give you an idea about, about how that works. Also, there's a trend for having, you know, Facebook office hours, but I think this is usually more in the benefit of the, of the professor because during office hours, a lot of students, they don't feel like coming to our offices and talking to us. So this would be one way in order to, to, to engage with them. And also, a lot of schools are going towards using mobile uh, for all of their details. So registration, looking up classes, keeping up to date with the events. They're doing that either via dedicated mobile apps or via, via mobile sites. Also, uh, live streaming commencements are also quite common uh, with different universities. Um, this is also another example of how Twitter is being used in different classrooms. The class is studying World War I. If he asks a question... Does anybody know from the book how many people did go to prison? Students tweet the answer, complete with those Twitter hashtags. Remember, Damon, make sure you have a pound in front of the, the, the WWI. If he shows a video, they tweet their feedback. Many men died because of the terrible conditions they were living in. I love the way she wrote that. That's a pretty good sentence. It all gets projected onto this digital chalkboard. A lot of them, what it did help them with was finding their voice. Because I do have many students that do not participate in my class discussions or share what's on their mind. So Twitter became that vehicle. This is quite common with all professors where they feel that students who are shy in class, they don't want to speak up, they're much, much more active. And this is something that, that Leila just shared with us as well. Um, also, there are a few gimmicks that are, uh, professors are, tr are trying to use with, with Dante's Divine Comedy. They were trying to work on the different versions of Dante's Hell and you know, the communication of if you wanted to live tweet your event, you know, you're, you're, you're passing through Dante's different levels, what would you tweet? So this was a way for one of the professors to one, get them to actually read the material, and two, get them excited about it. Um, I want to tell you a bit more about the, the, the class that I teach uh, at LEU, digital media class. Uh, uh, it's, it's called LEU, leusocial.com. Just to give you uh, an idea about what, what, a, what a, a semester would look like in terms of numbers, we generate around 10,000 tweets per semester. 
uh, average around 20 to 23 students. Uh, we have our own hashtag, the website. We have around 250 blog posts and 150 comments on those blog posts. That's, if you want to wrap up this semester as a whole, that would be the result of the different efforts that we do. The choice of the name for LEU Social di didn't come from, uh, from us. What we did was we opened it up to the class to, to vote on the class name. We also opened the choice up to the online community for them to vote. So different people voted and they added their own. So we, start, so we started with a small set. People voted for the ones they wanted. They added their own and so on. And accordingly, the name LEU, LEU Social uh, was born. This was done as well for the, for the hashtag. Um, also, you know, uh, Interesting part where um, I do a very small experiment with, with, with my students. I actually friend them on Facebook the first day. So they have this struggle where, do I confirm? Because you know, this guy is going to give me a grade, so I can't ignore him. But if I confirm, I'm letting him into my circle. So, so there is this conflict. And it's interesting, interesting to see that after the course is done, and we sit and discuss this, they, they look back and see that their, uh, their concern was a bit silly at first because by the time we're done with the course and with the amount of information and interaction that we share, the pictures, the videos, the, the, the lifestyle issues that we deal with when it comes to a student and student life, this no longer becomes a, a, an issue or a concern. We also continue to introduce new things. This is one of the challenges also for teaching such, such a course is you have to always keep, keep it up to date. So uh, la last semester we introduced Google+, Plus. Th th this semester we introduced Path uh, and Pinterest. Uh, we're also discussing the new Facebook timeline. We're also talking about the new, uh, the new Arabic version of Twitter that, that they just started with the new hashtag in Arabic and so on. For those of you interested in, in Pinterest and Path and they want to know more about them, uh, I think Media Labs has an event coming up on April 19th. Uh, if you want to know more about that, it's tmlabs slash lab activities. Uh, also, we get highly involved in, in, in different live event coverages. Well, um, in, any, in any form of discussion about technology and use and education, there are two key elements for the success. One is having a, you know, passionate educators and professors and teachers behind it. They play a very critical role in working with the students, whether making the content more easy to use, whether you know, spending the time with a difficult technology for them for being able to communicate. And the second thing is to have you know, passionate parents behind them, trying to push them and so on. And uh, on that note, I'd also like to, to thank my parents who are here with us today for you know, building, uh, building in me an interest in, in wanting to continue to learn and, uh, and a passion to teach, which you know, as a lot of you know, it's very difficult to get. Uh, thank you very much. The slide is, is up on SlideShare if, you, if, you, if you'd like to keep a, co co a copy of it. And I'm ready to answer any questions uh, regarding to how you can use social media during uh, intimate moments.